Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Francisco, for inviting me for this uh, uh, webinar. And also, I would like to welcome all the participants for their interest and for uh, devoting their time for um, to listen to what robots, AI, and automation technologies have to offer to uh, tourism industries. So, um, a little bit uh, about myself. Um, I'm Professor and Vice Rector of Research at Varna University of Management. I'm also the founder and editor-in-chief of the European Journal of Tourism Research, a journal that is uh, that started 14 years ago. And the breaking news uh, from today is that uh, today I launched another journal, which is Robonomics, the Journal of the Automated Economy. So practically, this is my first webinar as editor-in-chief of this journal. I'm also CEO of a, a consulting company, Zangador LTD, which focuses on uh, consulting tourism and hospitality companies on improving their uh, operations. Uh, now, uh, Francisco told you about uh, uh, the book. So this is uh, the cover of uh, the book. It was published in October last year. You can see the reaction of ladies seeing the cover, seeing the book. So boys, don't hesitate. Uh, and also, this is the reaction of the robots seeing uh, the book finally published. When we talk about robots, uh, we should and automation and artificial intelligence, we should consider that they are not part of science fiction anymore. However, people have different opinions and different perceptions what these technologies are. When, uh, when we say robots, some people think about uh, such intelligent robots, cute robots. Probably one day they will arrive, but uh, at least for the moment they will not be sentient. Others have a very negative opinion about uh, robotic technologies, and they think that uh, um, robots will, uh, will, will consider humanity as enemy and are going to terminate us. Of course, this is a wonderful scenario for Hollywood because it will generate billions of dollars for them, but uh, this is not going to be the case. And of course, uh, we have a third group of, uh, uh, of people who consider that uh, robots will be sentient and uh, at one point we shall have technological singularity when humans and machines merge. But at least for the moment, we are not talking about such robots. We are talking about these technologies. Industrial robots. I'm pretty sure that uh, most of you already have cars. And uh, probably 80% of these cars have been, uh, uh, were manufactured through industrial robots. This means that it, will, that it is not uh, the immigrants or foreigners who take the jobs of people working in the car industry in the US, for example, but uh, it is automation technologies. Also, robotic technologies are widely used in warehousing, supply and logistics. These are Kiva robots which uh, Amazon uses in its uh, warehouses or in agriculture for, uh, for uh, detecting uh, the quality of the soil, humi humidity, and uh, whether there are any weeds there. Also for transportation with uh, autonomous cars, not quite uh, well commercialized for the moment, but uh, this is the future. Also in medicine, many operations are, are made with the help of uh, such medical robots. Or in warfare, this is the dream of every single general in the world to be able to bomb the enemies without sending human troops on uh, ground. Or in household, when uh, we, men, we, uh, we are quite lucky when we have uh, such uh, robots we go because uh, our wives do not torture us with uh, vacuum cleaning. Or in swimming pools for cleaning, for gardens, for cutting the grass, or as guards, uh, well, this uh, robotic guard, uh, it will not arrest you, but it is equipped with uh, uh, face recognition technology and with cameras. So as a good citizen, it will report you to the responsible guards. Parcel delivery, this is practically where competition among uh, delivery companies is uh, now. This is the last mile delivery from the final uh, uh, warehouse until the home of uh, the customer. 
oh, uh, robots can be used for education, for entertainment, for provision of, inform of uh, information. This is uh, a photo of me with a paper robot at uh, Munich airport two years ago. Awful legal services. You can use you can use artificial intelligence, for example, to sift through the thousands of cases that can uh, that can be used in uh, uh, in a legal case. Or artificial intelligence is used in search engines or in e-commerce. For example, when you start uh, uh, searching something, Google auto, uh, uh, Google auto completes your search. Or in Amazon, when you buy something. Uh, miraculously, you start receiving recommendations for similar products or for complementary complementary products, and also chatbots. This is the chatbot of the European Journal of Tourism Research that I uh, developed. So, if you go to Facebook and like the page of uh, DJTR, practically it will be the chatbot that is responding to you. It is not me. It's always great fun in the evenings when I see uh, the communication between the chatbot and uh, the users. Of course, it's not very smart. <laughs> it doesn't have human lev uh, level uh, capabilities, but uh, at least provides uh, information. Also, in artificial intelligence is used in finance. Uh, much of a uh, um, significant portion of uh, the trade on uh, the financial markets is uh, through the so-called algorithmic uh, trade, when algorithms open and close different positions within milliseconds, something which is not possible for a human being to do because it's so fast. This is the so-called high-frequency trade. It's so fast that the human brain cannot process the information. But also we have voice-activated devices, which will be uh, a hit now with uh, the COVID-19 pandemic because uh, people would and hotels will be probably forced to use such uh, technologies in order to avoid uh, uh, touching of surfaces. Also in journalism, artificial intelligence is used. This is uh, an, Engli uh, an English artificial intelligence anchor that uh, the Chinese say that they developed. I haven't seen it in action, but uh, at least this is what they uh, said they, they have done. But also, robots can be smart working and attentive robotic students. This is a photo of uh, one such a robotic student at a, a conference I attended last year. Or they can be cucumber cutting robots. This is a special slide for Ulrike Gretzel. And uh, also, they can be used as priests. Uh, so um, this robot reads the Bible to old people in nursing homes. Or they can be used for sex services. The good thing about sex robots is that uh, male robots always can, and the female robots never complain and never get headaches. And of course, if you think that automation technologies, robots, artificial intelligence, OK, they are hype. They are part of uh, science fiction, or probably they have very narrow application. You are damn wrong. Uh, a couple of years ago, uh, the national um, the um, the National Research Council in the, uh, the United States published several series of several reports regarding um, how the U.S. economy should be should prepare for the coming age of artificial intelligence. And they say that uh, by 2025, 2030, the, the US economy should be ready for uh, the AI tsunami that is coming. In 2017, OECD also published one similar report. So what about tourism and hospitality? In, uh, in tourism and hospitality, we can have a, a mobile application with which we can open and close uh, doors. We can have digital receptionists. Uh, this is uh, DigiEva, one digital receptionist, uh, which is used in several uh, on the websites of several hotels in uh, Bulgaria. Also, you can have kiosks for uh, check-in uh, in different hotels. Uh, and uh, with the current pandemic, uh, many companies, many companies will be forced to use such uh, kiosks in order to provide physical distancing. Also, robots can be used in hotels for room service delivery. This is the first. Uh, uh, this is the first room service robot, 
which is in use uh, in Best Western Premier's uh, Sofia Airport. This is the first room service robot in Bulgaria. I mean, also they can be used as uh, concierges to provide uh, information. And of course, we all know about uh, Henna Hotel in Japan, opened in 2020 in 2015. Uh, with uh, numerous robots there. Last year, in um, if I remember well, on 14th of uh, January 2019, they announced that they are uh, switching off uh, probably more than half of their robots. And you can't imagine what happened on my Facebook wall. Uh, because people know how much I love automation, and uh, not everyone from my friends was automation. So I started receiving many uh, posts uh, how uh, uh, this uh, hotel is a failure, robots are, are not going to replace us, uh, etc. Practically, uh, Henna Hotel, they turned off uh, some of the robots because, uh, because of simple economics and uh, because of customers' perception. Because customers do not accept every single uh, every single task or every single service to be delivered by robots for some of them they prefer humans to deliver this but also uh, uh some at least uh, considering the current technological capabilities of automation technologies sometimes it's it's much better a human employee to uh to perform a particular task rather than uh, a robot also, we can use in uh, restaurants with uh, such kiosks uh, or in uh, restaurants with conveyor belts. This is my favorite uh, drone for delivering pizza. So instead of uh, having a drone delivering bombs, we shall have uh, pizza bombs, uh, which is good, not good for the belly, but at least uh, we survive. And also we have, uh, uh, ro we have uh, um, robots which are used as waiters. Uh, and uh, for tracking, uh, uh, we use automation technologies for tracking um, uh, the, uh, the order. Or uh, again, in restaurants, one uh, this is uh, um, this is a ro robotic host in uh, Tanuki restaurant in Dubai. The other one is um, the white uh, the white one is uh, a, ro a robot for uh, as waiter in one uh, Chinese restaurant. And uh, in uh, Boston, we have one restaurant which is also automated uh, for preparing the food, and uh, it's also self-service. This is Spice. Uh, we can have also in meetings and, and events, we can have telepresence. So instead of having some uh, uh, someone traveling to a conference, we can have a person connecting to a uh, to a. Uh, to a robot and uh, moving there. Now with the COVID-19 uh, pandemic, probably we can observe this uh, more. Also, some cruise companies, uh, they introduced uh, uh, robotic bars so that the bartenders were also replaced uh, there. We also know about uh, these automated ticketing uh, machines uh, and uh, also uh, air, uh, in airports and train and uh, Air and transport stations, we can have uh, uh, boarding automated issue of boarding carts, or uh, this is uh, this is one photo from uh, Gatwick Airport in uh, the UK. When uh, you don't have a person checking the uh, checking the documents, uh, but you have face recognition technology uh, and connects uh, the uh, the face which is in the biometric passport and uh, the face of the person to let uh, the person in. Also, in urban transport, we can have uh, um, QR codes and mobile applications. And in travel agencies, uh, such information kiosks. And museums and uh, art galleries, also robotic hosts. Uh, or augmented reality or virtual reality. Uh, by the way, this uh, uh, photo is from a museum at uh, Urao. Uh, Federal University, they have their own museum there. And digital assistants uh, with different skills or chatbots. This is a chatbot of booking. The other one is a port city concierge. So we have a chatbot for a whole city in uh, Bulgaria. Or we can have automation technologies used in car rental. So practically, we, can, uh, we have a wide variety of automation technologies uh, that can be uh, uh, that can be used. So this is my personal slogan. 
in robots we trust. Many people ask me why, why, why we need robots and automation technologies in general, practically because of this one. Be uh, um, we need, because this is the most important number in uh, the history of the universe, so it, on, or at least in the history of humanity. It is not the price of oil, the, uh, the exchange rate or inflation or something else. This is number of children per woman. Since 1966, the number of children per, per woman in the world is decreasing rapidly. And uh, what do we have? In South Korea, this is the country with the lowest birth rate in the world. They had 1.05 children per woman in 2017. The replacement rate is 2.1 kids. Two kids replace the parents, one, 0.1 kid uh, replaces the child mortality until the age of uh, 18. So uh, uh, in Italy, it's 1.34. In Bulgaria, 1.54. Uh, 50, uh, so what we see is that practically in, uh, uh, in, in the developed world, we have uh, in the developed countries, we have something like uh, um, 25, 30% fewer children than, than necessary for the replacement. And what we have uh, and uh, what we can say is that within these countries, demography will force companies to use automation technologies. What about other countries? Uh, in, in other countries, we have uh, an increasing population. So probably in these countries, automation technologies will not, uh, there will be not so huge need for such, for such automation technologies. So what is the solution to the plummeting populations? We practically, we have three possible options, depending on the time horizon and the social and political resistance to these solutions. The best one is produce people uh, uh, through the, uh, to the normal biological process. But of course, it requires long term. Second option is uh, import people. So this is through immigration, but this can create a lot of tension. The most politically correct and uh, the, uh, the decision that uh, creates least political resistance and social tension and can, and can be useful in the short term and in the long term, this is practically substituting people with automation technologies. So uh, in practice, Automation technologies, they compensate for the unborn children. At least for the moment and at least for the next 10, 15 years, they will compensate for this. Uh, uh, because many companies, they find challenges including, uh, to find people, including in tourism and hospitality. So what about the economics of racer technologies in tourism and hospitality? We can have the technologies. We can have the demography that is forcing companies to use uh, these technologies, but it doesn't mean uh, that companies will practically invest in these technologies because if they cannot afford it, if customers are not willing to pay for these technologies, if uh, customers are, are not willing to use such technologies, then at the end of the day, these technologies will not be used regardless of uh, anything else. So. I will explain first the economic framework of racer technologies adoption in uh, travel, tourism, and hospitality. I, I'm not sure how visible is this one. This is the conceptual framework, the uh, conceptual framework from the book uh, that uh, Francisco showed you, and uh, I split it into two parts: the, uh, uh, the upper part and the second, uh, the bottom half. So this is uh, the upper half. We have the demand. Uh, well, the whole framework consists of uh, customers, uh, tour, travel, tourism, and hospitality companies, and uh, uh, the production factors, and uh, the supply of the production factors. We have the demand for tourism products. The demand. This is the this is the tourists. They. We have the comp, We have the uh, tourism companies and we have their competitors. Tourists, they influence com tourist companies through uh, their willingness to pay for services, per uh, perceived service quality, uh, service process participation. Uh, 
Within each company, we have four processes, four functional areas. This is marketing, operations, human resources, and finance. Some companies will adopt automation technologies, others will not. And this will influence the competitiveness of these companies, whether companies will use it or not. And of course, the impact of this will be on financial performance, whether at the end of the day, companies improve their bottom line or not. Their managers will make cost-benefit analysis and will decide whether to invest in automation or not. The bottom half of, uh, uh, of, uh, the, frame, of uh, the framework relates to the production factors. We have human employees and research technologies. And between them, we have substitution versus enhancement effect. Not always these technologies substitute employees. We will discuss these later. The relationship is influenced by the product, relative productivity of human employees and research technologies, by marginal rate of uh, substitution, cost, economies of scale, scope, etc. When the company, uh, the company Create, uh, uh, when the company decides to, in, uh, to uh, use human employees or automation technologies for its services, then it this company creates demand for human employees or demand for racer technologies. And then this company enters the market, the labor market for human employees or the market for racer technologies. And there, this company faces the supply of human employees or uh, characterized by the number of uh, human employees available on the labor market, the skills they have, the wages uh, they require, and we have the supply of research technologies and the technical uh, defined by the technical characteristics of these technologies, user skills, prices of these technologies. But of course, both markets, the market for human input, uh, the labor market and the market for research technologies, they are also interrelated. So what are the benefits of using research technologies? So what are the positive outcomes? So why should we use research technologies? First, because they can work 24 seven. There's no way a human employee can work 168 hours a week, no way. Also, they could implement various tasks and expand their scope with software and hardware upgrades. If I want, for example, the chatbot to, develop, uh, to provide answers to different to new questions, I will just provide additional block with additional questions and possible questions and answers. If I want the chatbot to be able to communicate in different languages, I will add option for choosing the language. Uh, but for human, this will take much more time. But also, these technologies, they can provide constant or improving quality of the work. They can work correctly and in a timely manner. Or they can work, they can do routine work repeatedly. Also, they do not complain. They do not get ill, do not go on strike, spread rumors, discriminate, quit their jobs without notice, show negative emotions. They don't show up from work. All these things are issues which uh, managers often complain that they face from human employees or vice versa. Uh, but also, <laughs> this is what Chef Paupaten says in Star Wars, that every strike of human employees is a pathway towards their substitution by automation technologies. Of course, he doesn't say this, but it sounds nice because I'm a great fan of Star Wars. Uh, also, Racer technologies, they lead to labor cost savings because they work 24 seven, may serve numerous uh, uh, customers simultaneously. They can increase sales because of customers' curiosity seeing uh, the robots and 24 seven availability. For example, if I stay in a hotel that has a room service robot, I will order breakfast, lunch, afternoon breakfast, dinner in the hotel, just in order to see the robot delivering the food to my room. Also, easier scheduling and planning of operations because it's easy. You need more robots, 
you you turn on you turn them on you don't need the robots you don't you don't lay off them you just turn off improved environmental sustainability of operations because it at the end of the day resources may be used in a in, in a smarter way also research technologies they lead to lead to increased role of the customer in the service delivery this is very important marketing implication of uh, race technologies we have customers are transformed into prosumers they co-create value and the initiative for the relationship for entering into the interaction with the with uh, the company is transferred to the customer also race technologies they save employees time from performing 3d this is though dirty though and dangerous and repetitive tasks this means that employees will be able to uh, focus on more revenue generating activities why do you need a human to deliver food to the room and then go back this is 10 15 minutes probably when someone else can do this someone else by someone else i mean a robot also at least for the moment at least for the next uh, 10 uh, years we shall see predominantly enhancing in fact rather than replacing employees although we shall have also significant replacement and also automation technologies they solve some of the problems with hiring and firing employees especially seasonal personnel the legislation within the european union is very rigid in terms of firing employees and many companies they decide they prefer not to hire employees because after that if they need to uh, fire them it will be very difficult that's why many companies practically work with uh, fewer stuff that they want and then and, and they need and this has negative consequences for the staff for, for the people that are hired because they feel overworked so uh but hiring and firing a kiosk a chatbot a robot is extremely easy turn on and or turn off also they uh, another uh, way that they disrupt uh, the industry. This is they enhance the perceived service quality through uh, new, attractive, interactive ways of service delivery. They can communicate in different languages, but they can make the, the process funny. For example, well, this is a screenshot from one video clip on YouTube when a baby is using the vacuum cleaner to as a ride. So, also, in marketing, research technologies, they allow automated pricing, personalized pricing, marketing automation, predictive analytics, better forecasting. There are companies uh, that, you, uh, that offer services uh, related to automated pricing. They see your booking history. They see, uh, um, they see for example, in uh, online travel agency, what are the prices offered by other companies, by uh, other hotels and uh, what are the characteristics they use um, specific algorithms which are trade secret and um, they offer you and they offer a price you max uh, then the decision might be yours it means that uh, you are in the loop us marketing manager kept in the loop or it uh, it may be uh, the automated pricing may be made uh, automatically on the website of the hotel without uh, human intervention. This means that the marketing manager is kept off the loop. Of course, personalized pricing, you have to be very careful. This is perfect price discrimination. This is the dream of economists like me, but it's uh, in many countries, this is illegal. Uh, and also, companies that adopt uh, automation technologies they can boast positive word of mouth because they can they can uh, have the image of being innovative high-tech companies of course we have the dark side of the force as well not only the light the first from financial point of view this is the huge financial costs for acquisition installation maintenance software update creating robot friendly facilities upskilling etc one robot is not is not cheap one robot 
uh, one one road, for example, paper robot will cost depending on the company, depending on the insurance, etc. Probably within the range of fifteen thousand euros. Uh, a room service delivery robot might be more expensive. However, one way uh, one way to offset these high costs will be technology as a service, robot as a service, kiosk as a service, software as a service. This means that you are not uh, you are renting the robot, the kiosk, the software. So it's not you don't you don't need to invest at the beginning a lot of money, but you pay money every month. This means that you are transforming from economic point of view your uh, initial upfront costs into monthly fixed costs which means that it will be easy it will be easy to compare the costs for automation technologies with the labor costs however there's one thing which is called called vendor walk in effect this means that once you choose this technology once you uh, adopt particular robot you you invest a lot in it, in it not only from financial point of view but also in terms of time these are the, from economic point of view, these are sunk costs. And it will be very difficult to change the supplier after that. And some suppliers are very opportunistic and they will increase your prices in time. So you have to be very careful uh, regarding the con your contracts and what data will remain in your product in, uh, uh, in the robot and in, in the kiosk. Uh, but this is it goes uh, beyond uh, the scope of this presentation. So also automation technologies they lack creativity at least for the moment. I've seen some paintings uh, and uh, poems uh, written by uh, artificial intelligence or painted by artificial intelligence. It's they are pretty amazing, but of course uh, there's a long way until uh ai reaches uh, human skills in terms of creativity but also negative impacts uh, also they can decrease flexibility of the service delivery system a robot is less flexible than a human also they will not be anytime soon completely ind independent of human supervision they like personal approach they can orientate in structured situation if you if uh, if you ask a question to the uh, to the chatbot of uh, of the book, by the way, I also made the chatbot for the of the book, or the chatbot of uh, DJTR. If you ask a question that goes beyond uh, the scope of what is uh, programmed for them, they will not be able to provide an answer. But a human employee, at least, will be able to orient it within the context. And also a company that offers, that uses such automation technologies, it may suffer negative publicity. It may be perceived, uh, it may be perceived as um, a company that puts profits before humans. So this is one very negative uh, implication for this. So if a company introduces Razor, it has to frame it in a very, uh, from a PR perspective, in a very um, convincing way. Also, uh, recent technologies may be perceived as threat by human employees. They may say the company wants, wants to, uh, to get rid of us and uh, it may face resistance by customers. This is, uh, a, um, this is a photo of uh, March of the Machines makes idle hands. This is a, a photo of one of the uh, of, um, New York Times uh from uh, uh 1928 so now 100 near 100 years later we discuss the same thing that uh, technology is uh, replacing uh, humans 200 years ago it was uh, the wooded movement but also recent technologies they can lead to the disappearance of whole industries so we are not talking about a few companies of your jobs, we are talking about whole industries. So the automobile industry practically led to the disappearance of horses.
and also robots do not go to spa centers. This is a special slide for Metin Kozak. So um, robots do not consume. So uh, we may have uh, robots. Uh, they will be you. Uh, they will create. Uh, they may be used for uh, delivering services, but uh, when you don't pay to human employees, these human employees will not be able to spend for other services. So at one point, we need to consider the, uh, uh, the effect on uh, consumption. Also, another implication, we need to find the, the, we need to strike the right balance. My personal perspective is that hospitality and tourism companies in the future will be divided into two large groups, high tech and high touch companies. But I'm pretty sure that there will be more than 50 shades of gray in between them. And the current pandemic will force many of the companies that were resisting the use of automation technologies practically to use this. So, Many people ask human employees and research technologies, are they substitutes or complements, whether we, we shall have substitution or enhancement effect? So uh, this is a long question. So if you remember from Tom and Jerry, Tom was uh, there was this one episode when uh, uh, when uh, the owner of the house uh, bought a robotic cat. So practically, cat was the first guy losing his job because of uh, artificial intelligence. But when we discuss this question, we have to consider a few things. First, we always have substitution and enhancement effect simultaneously. So the, the answer is not so straightforward. Sec and the balance between these two effects depends on three things. First, this is automation of tasks versus the automation of jobs. Second, this is the relative productivity of RISA and human employees. And third, this is the service capacity of a company. I will have a few slides which are explaining this from a theoretical point of view, from economic perspective. And then I will have uh, three slides that will show this graphically to put things into perspective. So please uh, be patient. Uh, the first one, automation of tasks versus automation of jobs. Uh, um, probably the most cited paper in terms of automation technologies in uh, in the field of robonomics, this is by Frey and Tosborn from uh, 2017. So I checked on uh, Monday evening when I was uh, um, preparing the presentation, it was cited 5,693 times in Google Scholar. So they reported that 47% of US jobs are susceptible to computerization. However, I person, uh, I, I, I'm skeptical towards some of the results. Some of the, uh, some of the results are fantastic, but to some of the, uh, the results, I'm a bit skeptical because uh, when we talk about automation, we are not talking about automation of whole jobs. We are talking about tasks. For example, putting data in a reservation system cleaning the floor, delivering pizza, producing a sales forecast or anything, completing or issuing a document. Uh, so it should be tasks. This is because every job consists of different tasks. So every job is a set of tasks. And if some jobs are auto, if some tasks are automated and the set of tasks human employees need to perform decreases, we're talking about the skilling of jobs. Let's say that, you, that a particular job was uh, uh, consisting of, let's say, 100 tasks, and half of them are eliminated then because of automation. So we talk in that way, in this case, about this killing of jobs. So the company will, will be able to hire a person with fewer skills, with lower education. If a job position, a job position is eliminated if most of the tasks that constitute this job position are automated. So in that case, we shall have substitution effect that prevails. However, if some tasks are automated, but this allows employees to increase the productivity and to upgrade their skills. So we're talking about upskilling of jobs. So in that case, enhancement effect prevails. 
For example, room service. We we have a robot. In uh, previously, it was one person that was uh, that was delivering. Now it will be a robot that is delivering. But the person will be able to serve more orders. So in that case, probably that job position will not be eliminated, but the job position will be enhanced. About the relative productivity, if if the revenues per dollar cost for recent technologies is greater than the revenues per dollar costs for uh, per dollar of labor costs, then the recent technologies are more productive. It means that for the same amount of money that the company invests in human resources uh, of, uh, of for recent technologies, the company receives greater revenues from recent technologies. So in that case, the recent technologies are more productive. So the company will have stimuli to automate the process. However, here we have one serious problem from accounting point of view and financial point of view because it's relatively easy to measure the costs, race related labor-related costs. But the problem is to identify which revenues come from race technologies and which revenues come from the human employee. Take room service. It is the human that takes the order, prepares the food, but it's the robot that delivers. How will this revenue be split? So it, for the moment, for, from a managerial accounting point of view, there are significant issues that need to be uh, solved. Also, regarding the capacity of the company, if race technologies expand the service capacity of the company, for example, online booking of tours and hotel, uh, and hotel accommodation via chatbot, or these technologies improve the utilization of the capacity, this is a robot for room service delivery, without the need to hire additional employees, or if the additional revenues which these technologies provide, generate, is offsets the additional uh, costs for the human employees, then what happens is that the recent technologies decrease the overall average cost to serve one customer. And what will happen in this case is that the enhancement effect will prevail. This, the company increases the revenue, the costs will also increase, but the revenues will increase fast. But if we have a company with a fixed and well-utilized capacity, for example, this uh, hotel with very high occupancy rate, not at the moment, uh, but after the pandemic, or the maximum demand is limited because of this fixed capacity. For example, this is the concierge services of a hotel. The concierge services in the hotel are used by the guests that are already accommodated. Then the use of kiosks, robots, and chatbots may not, may not generate additional revenues and the additional customers. In that case, the focus of the managers of the company will be on efficiency, cutting costs. So in that case, probably, I'm pretty sure that, automa that uh, automation will lead to substitution. So what's the mechanism? Now, now this is the funny part. Now, let's say that we have one hotel and for, simpl uh, and for simplicity, we have three job positions and three processes. Job position one, two, three, process one, two, three. Each process has uh, consists of different tasks which are performed by different job positions. So this, uh, these are, so we're not talking about uh, specific job positions or processes, they're just uh, uh, for the example. Let's say that the company introduces automation technologies, room service robot, chatbot on the Facebook page, or uses a booking engine and or, or uh, or uses a, a software for automated pricing or something else, whatever. Then what will happen is the following. So these are the, uh, uh, the first nine cells are the, uh, uh, in the upper uh, left corner. These are the same, uh, the same tasks. But what happens? Some of the tasks will be eliminated. These are with dark gray. Others tasks will be reallocated. Third will not change, but yet fourth 
will be newly created tasks. So what happens with this process? For the first process, we have five, we had five tasks at the beginning, but now all tasks are automated. So we have a completely automated process. Process, process two. For process two, we have four of the tasks that were eliminated because they were automated. We have a few tasks that are newly created and one task which is performed by another job position, but, but, it, but it remains. So here we have partially automated process. Process three, practically nothing changed for it. So because uh, uh, it is the same six tasks at the beginning, just one of the tasks is performed by someone else, by job position two, not job position one. So here we have not automated process, but also we have a process four, which is newly created process, a process which was not existing at the beginning. And it consists of new tasks. What happens with the job positions? So we look at the columns. The first job position, initially it performed eight tasks. Now six of them are automated. So for this job position, we have two available tasks only. Why should we keep this job position for these two tasks? Why not move these tasks to job position two, which is better because they will be reallocated. And then all, job, all tasks within this job position one are eliminated. So the final effect is the whole job position is eliminated. In this case, substitution effect is much higher than the enhancement effect. Look at job position two. We have two of the two of the tasks eliminated. We have two reallocated. So the job position is enhanced, uh, is enriched. Sorry, the job position is uh, uh, enriched with uh, new uh, tasks. Uh, which it was not performed, but these tasks, they are not uh, um, changed through uh, automation. Then we have job, uh, so in that, in our case, we have substitution and enhancement, which is uh, at uh, approximately the same level. Then we have job position uh, three. In our case, we have one task e is eliminated, but we have other tasks that are created by the process. So in our case, enhancement effect is greater than the substitution effect. And finally, we have a completely new job position for, which consists of new tasks. Of course, in practice, it is possible that some of the new created tasks are uh, in other play in uh, for or all the job positions. It's possible that the newly created job position includes, includes tasks that were also existing before that. But in, in any case, we have tasks that are eliminated, reallocated, newly created. And this is the final, uh, this is the final uh, uh, situation within the company. We have, initially we had job positions one, two, and three, and processes one, two, and three. Now we have job positions two, three, and four that perform processes two, three, and four. Job position one, gone. Process one, gone. So what's the conclusion? Is that the research technologies, they eliminate tasks for some human jobs. They help reallocate tasks for other jobs and create new tasks for existing or new job positions. So hence, for some jobs, the substitution effect predominates while for other, the enhancement effect predominates. So when people say, what is the impact of automation on tourism and hospitality jobs? I can't answer whether it will be substitution and enhancement. It all depends on what are the tasks within a particular job position. However, there are many tasks in uh, tourism and hospitality jobs that can be automated. So, however, we should consider the technology is a tool, not a goal. We should not invest in the research technologies just because it's cool, just because it's hype, or because Stan said this. It's much better if we uh, uh, we use we need to use it effectively and efficiently. So, Robert's have arrived and are here to say, prepare some references and further reading. And thank you so much. I am available thank you. Thank for you so much, uh, your questions. Dr. Stanislav, thank you very much. 
Thank you very much.